as for stimulating the economy, does anybody believe that negative interest rates will do a good job stimulating the economy? Did we all explain it? I mean, I, I mean, give it. Let, let's play. Someone play devil's advocate with me. Okay, say Reggie has no idea what he's talking about. Try and make a contrary argument. Does anybody tell me how to stimulate the economy? You had a decent argument, but I have no incentive to lend you money if you're not going to give it back. So I can understand why you take out the loan and go shopping. But you have to explain to me where you get the loan from. I'm not going to. But in Sweden, it's a uh, kind of different uh, situation because in Sweden we have. A so when I was a child, we had this same thing, and not the negative interest at all. We had this big crash, and we had the um, bank that was uh, was actually the government bank. And, you know, we had the taxes come in that way. So it wasn't actually just the um, private market. The government was actually interfering and through their bank lending the money for the so, but that's not the case anymore. Well, anyway, because the ECP is funded primarily by governments and private banks. But if the government is supplying the liquidity, and the government is the one that's buying the bonds, and they're supplying all the money, how is it supplying the economy? It's like, I'm going to give you a loan, and then you're going to give me a loan to give me, give me money so I can give you money back. And we keep loaning each other money. Is that the economy doing better, or are we taking that same dollar and going back and forth? And that's what's happening. Yes. I was explained uh, by an advisor from your role that today the, uh, the reserve, the gold reserve, mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with the amount of uh, the amount of money in the market anymore. Right. But it was before. Right. Can when you, you have gold. Something about that? Because I don't understand. Well, a lot of a lot of the currencies were pegged to gold, mm -hmm. and they did that basically so you couldn't get away with cheating. Um, one dollar was redeemable at one point before a certain amount of gold at the Federal Reserve. It's living, present a dollar, theoretically, present a dollar to the Federal Reserve to get a certain amount of gold back. Um, if anybody's familiar with the UK and you know the Brits, um, their currency is a pound sterling, which used to be the reserve currency. Um, the reserve currency is the currency that the world does business in. Um, that's a politically correct name for saying the currency of the nation has the biggest gun. So the largest military usually has a um, reserve currency and they control how the rest of the world does business. Um, right now it's the US, before then it was the uh, British, the pound sterling. The reason why they call the pound sterling, the pound sterling is, you can actually, if you took a pound, the currency, you bought it to the bank, you get sterling return, sterling silver. No longer, of course. So when you separate the unit of currency from something physical and tangible, then you can pay all types of things. So when the U.S. gets in trouble and they lend a little bunch of money out to U.S. Treasuries and everybody borrows to U.S. Treasuries because we are the reserve currency, we can do that. And then things are not going well and we can pay the loans back. We have several trillion outstanding, like with the Chinese. So we default on the loans. But we don't default on the loans like you would default on the loans. When you take out a loan, you decide not to pay you more, you tell the bank I'm not going to send the money in. What the U.S. does is, we're going to send them the money, but we're going to take the money and we're going to chop it up in many parts. So here's a dollar. Right, I borrow the dollar, we'll give the dollar back. But before I give it back, I'm going to chop it up in 50 parts. And I'm just going to give one of the parts back. I'm going to put one dollar on the part. So here goes your dollar back, but it's worth 50 for the evening. So basically, I defaulted on the loan. I didn't give you the value that you borrowed, that I borrowed. But I'm able to do that because I have the reserve currency. That is not like part of the problem that, yeah. that we have to stimulate so much and that we are yeah. doing some negative interest rates, or does that doesn't Well, the problem is you're not stimulating. Mm -hmm. You know, the guys at the ECB say that you're stimulating, but you're not. You know, um, the method that's being used, mercy. The method that's being used to stimulate is called quantitative, quantitative easing. QE for short, and basically that is buying assets to make sure that you have a market for those assets upon reset. So um, a government such as Greece or Portugal or Ireland, or you have a lot of them, Italy or Spain, has a government that's been profligate, overspending over the last few years. Their bonds are in trouble, they're dropping in price. The ECB says, well, we're going to buy all these bonds. So there's always going to be a market for the bonds. So the price of the bond goes up, and the country looks like they're doing better. Normally, 
regular bond investor will not buy the bonds unless you got them at a discount because there's a strong chance that the country won't pay the interest rate or won't pay the interest on them. So instead of you sell the bonds at 100, which is par the retail price, and they say, well, you can sell them at 100, but I'm not going to pay $100 for it, even though it's an 8% interest rate. I'll give you $90 for it. And that $90, that $10 discount is a cushion in case something goes wrong. Now, when the price of the bond goes up, the interest rate, the yield on the bond goes down. To explain how that works, that's a bond, right? Let's say that's a million dollar bond, okay? It has a 10% coupon. That means at the end of 10 years, you owe me, uh, how much? Let's do it one year straight, 1.1 million back, okay? So, I, you borrow 1 million, at the end of the year, you use your 1.1 million back, give it back to you, okay? Now, let's do it again, you borrow 1 million, at par, the price of that book goes down 50%. So now, she buys it, pass it to her, she buys it from you for $500,000. You took a big loss, she don't look very smart, but she's very smart, okay? $500,000, 10% of a million is how much? $100,000. She gets the same 10% of that million on her $500,000. She only paid $500,000. So what's your yield? You got $100,000, you only put $500,000 out. I'll help you out, 20%, okay? That yield just went up 100%. It went from 10% to 20% because the price of the bond dropped. So that's an inverse relationship. When bond prices go down, yields go up. When yields go up, that means somebody's in trouble because people don't trust that they'll get paid. Mm. Get paid. When bond prices go up, yields go down. Bond prices go up because people think that it's a very strong investment and there's a lot of competition hammering for it. And so supply and demand that drives the price up.